Okay, so you've now gotten your tips in order and uh, you're going to start doing some uh, welding. So there's uh, three different stages to a fuselage. Okay, starts out in jig, right? When it's in that jig, nothing is welded on it. So you're dealing with just simple raw tubing. And that's pretty good news because, you know, you're starting the project off with something simple. When you're welding raw tubing, think of it as just a flat piece of steel, right? It's the same thickness everywhere you go. Okay. Now, if this is 035 and this is, say, 049, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. You're still talking one tip. Okay. So you can tack weld with one tip. So let's just say you choose one tip. Okay. And there's a range here. You're going to find that one range. Good to go. Start tack welding. Okay. Once it's tack weld, um, what do we do? Well, we have a bunch of tacks on here, and now it's time to weld the fuselage, right? Well, things start to get a little hairy at this point because, as we talked about up in this chart here, thickness is a big deal, right? It's a big heat sink. So take a look at this. Now we have a tack welded fuselage. Okay, it no longer looks like a line from from one side or like a kind of a side view. It would be the equivalent of taking this 035 plate, stacking steel on top, right? There's a dead space in between. Some tacks are small, some tacks are big, some tacks are thicker, some tacks are thinner. So that kind of poses to be somewhat of an issue. Um, so now we have options, right? So, what do we do? Do we use the same tip over here that we did here? Not necessarily, although you certainly probably can. It depends how you tack weld it, you see. So just like an airplane, um, when you're setting yourself up on a landing, right, it's all in your approach. Well, if you thought about your tack welds, as, as far as the final product, that can make a big difference in how easy it is to weld. If you remember in one of the videos I said I like to put really big tack welds in, the reason for that is simply the tip. I know that when it comes time to welding, I kind of want to use one tip instead of changing back and forth the tips because I know that with one tip I can increase the range a little bit and kind of figure this out. But what it offers me is, you know, when I use a real big tack weld, it's a huge heat sink. So that comes into play. I can use a bigger tip and not melt through the tubing, right? If I use the big tip over here, you melt through. If you use a big tack weld, right, you're really not gonna weld, you're not gonna burn through. And that of course takes a little bit of experience. So again, you know, I, and I don't boy, I don't want to make this sound complicated because it really isn't, you know. But um, you want to you want to think these things through. You want to understand that things, when you weld, become heat sinks. You start adding tack welds, and that thickness wants to pull that heat. It wants to grab it and pull it. That changes the whole dynamics of welding. Okay, not a big deal, but it's still something you need to consider. So once it's tack welded, you pull it out of the jig, right? And now you're welding this thing, you see. Once it's welded, now what? Well, here's, a, here's an example of, a, like, say, a landing gear, right? So this is like, on a baby ace, it's 90 thousandths plate. On a legal eagle, I think it's an eighth inch. I don't know. It's really thick for some reason. But um, now look what we have. So we have an 035 tubing, an 035 tubing. We have a weld that's already there. Now we're going to take a steel plate, set it up there, and weld it. Okay. That's the first type of heat sink. There's different types of heat sinks when you weld. This type, I just will call it number one. It's you got a bunch of welds, right? And you're putting heavy plate and we got thin wall tubing. Three things happening. Well, in this situation, you're gonna jump to a bigger tip, right? Now you're gonna jump to a big tip. Now some people will use a small tip around here, a little bigger tip, say around here, because this is a huge heat sink. Right? There's different ways to approach it. 
the lesson here is understand the tip and then their ranges. You know, I really like using a big tip on something like this and dialing it down. I really don't like to switch tips. But when you deal with, say, a plate on a landing gear, you're pretty much guaranteed to change tips. It really, it really depends, but you, you're pretty much guaranteed. But this is a huge heat sink. This is really thick steel, and it's pulling. The neat thing about it is when, when you're welding, okay, you're going to preheat. You're going to preheat this plate. Well, it's thick enough, and it's going to take long enough to preheat that it's, it's just going to automatically heat that tube for you. So that's actually kind of a benefit. Okay, so that's the first type of heat sink, one that has welds and thick steel on it. Okay. The last type of heat sink is diameter. So here's just a cross section of, say, a tube. So let's just say your longer on is 5 eighths of an inch diameter. And your intercostal is, say, half inch, right? And there's a space between it. We don't have that thick weld. This is heat sink number two. Okay. Well, because this is a diameter, okay, and let's face it, you know, you're gonna you're gonna start welding, say here, this diameter is gonna want to pull, just like it did over on this landing gear. It's a heat sink, so that's why you never ever want to you know heat this tip first. You want to run over here, right? If you know you're welding over here, and what I do actually is go on the opposite side at an angle. I heat this up and then I work my way up and get this cherry red. Then I lay my torch in and start welding. Otherwise, you'll burn this and melt it apart. Regardless, this is a heat sink. Large diameter tubes are heat sinks when you're trying to weld a small diameter tube. Okay, so in that situation, you don't really want to change tips. Okay, you want to stick with one tip. Okay, and work within that range. This is the this is the settling range. Okay, remember. Every time you adjust, adjust a settling, you're adjusting oxygen with it. So we don't really care about oxygen. Um, we'll get to that later, but it, this is all settling, okay? So that's the heat sink. And uh, I guess that kind of, I guess we're kind of done with that. So we're going to move to the next step.